So very good day to one and all. I am Dr. Rohit Gopinath and today we will be discussing about another important tumour in paediatric surgery which is neuroblastoma. Now neuroblastoma is the most common solid tumour in infancy and childhood. It is a neoplasm of neural crest origin arising commonly in the adrenal medulla along with the sympathetic ganglion chain from the neck to pelvis. Even though it is highly malignant, there have been no cases wherein spontaneous regression and maturation have been documented. Advanced cases of neuroblastoma are said to have dismal outcomes. Now, neuroblastoma as the term in a, is self-explanatory, it arises from primitive neuroblasts. So, neuroblasts are derived from the mantle layer of the developing spinal cord, basically neural crest cells. They are present in the fetal adrenal gland by around the 10 to 12th week in triuterine week and they increase in number by around 20 weeks and their number diminishes by the end of gestation. In those children who have a persistent neuroblastic foci within the adrenal gland, they are said to have a neuroblastoma in C2 and the incidence of neuroblastoma in C2 tumor is around 1 in 260 neonates who have, who have died due to congestive cardiac failure. The incidence of neuroblastoma as such varies from 1 in 7,500 to 10,000 children. It constitutes 10 percentage of all childhood tumors and 15 percent of all cancer related deaths. More than 50 percent cases of neuroblastoma are diagnosed at an age of less than 2 years and it is said to be more common among boys when compared to girls. It is one tumour which can be diagnosed antenatally. In fact, antenatally it is capable of infiltrating the placenta. The catecholamin released by these tumours in the fetus during the antenatal period can have effects on the mother which is called as a mirror syndrome. So, these catecholamins can produce flushing, hypertension, headaches in the mother and hence since it mirrors the effect on the fetus, the effects on the fetus are mirrored on the mother, this is called as a mirror syndrome. Now, there seems to be a definite predisposition of this tumour among twins, indicating the presence of a genetic foci. Now, infants with beckwith weidman syndrome, neurofibromatosis, neurochristopathies like Hirschsprung's disease, fetal alcohol syndrome and fetal hydantoin syndrome are more likely to develop neuroblastoma. So, fetal hydantoin syndrome is basically occurs because of maternal intake of phenytoin during pregnancy. A very unique association of uh, neuro neuroblastoma is with a condition which is called as central hypovent hypoventilation syndrome or ondine's curse. It is also a neurocrystopathy and its association with neuroblastoma is mediated by this gene called FOX2B gene. Hereditary neuroblastoma, like I said earlier, its predisposition among twins, there seems to be a hereditary or a genetic foci behind it. And hereditary neuroblastoma is widely considered to be mediated by this gene called ALK, which is anaplastic lymphoma kinase gene. It can occur at any site all over the body where neural crest tissue is found. So, the incidence or the occurrence of neuroblastoma is the highest in the adrenal gland where more than 50 percent cases occur in the adrenal gland. The second most common area is the paraspinal area where the sympathetic ganglion runs. Mediastinum accounts for more than 20 percent of cases of neuroblastoma and less than 5 percent of cases of neuroblastoma occur in the neck and in the pelvis. So, coming on to the clinical presentation of neuroblastoma. Now, the clinical presentation of any tumour as a matter of fact, let alone neuroblastoma can be subdivided based on the effects caused by the primary tumour, by the metastasis and by the metabolic byproducts that the tumour produces. This, this third point is particularly important with regard to neuroblastoma because it produces a lot of metabolic byproducts which can, which can have systemic effects on the child. 50 to 75 percentage of cases of children present with a mass palpable which is hard, nodular and very often painful. And at the time of presentation, most of these children tend to have constitutional symptoms like weight loss, 
fever, anemia, failure to thrive, and pain. 25% cases tend to have hypertension, which could be related to the release of catecholamines by these tumors. Hypercalcemia can also be noted by the tumors, either because of osteolysis or as a paraneoplastic effect. Now, these tumors are said to have a very thinned out pseudocapsule and it can rupture easily reading onto hemoperitoneum. You need not have a very significant trauma to cause a rupture of a neuroblastoma. It could be even a trivial trauma. Based on the site of uh, the neuroblastoma, it can have pressure effects. For example, if, it, if it's a neuroblastoma involving the cervicothoracic region, and it is in close proximation with the stellate ganglion. It can compress on part of the stellate ganglion causing honor syndrome characterized by anhydrosis, meiosis, n of thalmos, and absent spinal reflex. When there are metastases, particularly to the orbital region, it can result in a condition called raconis, wherein you have periorbital ecchymosis. So any child who has periorbital ecchymosis without a history of significant trauma always suspect the presence of a neuroblastoma. 